Oh, I can't wait. I got to get going here. Hello again, everyone. It's Dwayne. It is Sunday, May 1st, 2016. It's time for the weekend edition of One Man's Opinion. Okay, first of all, I've, I'm going to apologize to everyone right off the bat. I put out the show too early last Wednesday. If I'd waited a half hour, I would have had one hell of a scoop. Bernie Sanders, after my show was released, the news came out that he was letting go a lot of his staff. He was going to concentrate all his efforts on California. That's amazing. Absolutely. He's not conceding defeat, but he realizes that he is... uh, Wasting a lot of money, and he's going to go to California, and he is going to beg and plead to get those votes. With Governor Moonbeam out there, Jerry Brown, and if I don't know if this is true. I read this. I could not find any validation on this one way or the other, so I can't confirm or deny the story. But according to the story I read on the Internet, and we all know about the Internet, you can't really trust them either. Jerry Moonbeam Brown, the governor of California, signed a bill saying that illegal aliens can vote. If that's the case, I am going to give a piece of advice to all my California friends. And I'm going to do it in the way Arnold Schwarzenegger would have done it. Get out! Pack your bags. Move. Get out of California before it falls into the freaking ocean. A good earthquake would do that, but I'm afraid that it's going to lean so far to the left, it's just going to tilt over, and that's going to be it. So, get out of California while you have a chance. Load up the truck and move away from Beverly, okay? All right, let's talk politics. Now, first of all, speaking of California, on Friday, former California Governor Pete Wilson endorsed Ted Cruz. Now, he's still popular out there in California, even though there are some Republicans that blame him for the uh, demise of the Republican Party. I blame Arnold Schwarzenegger for that myself, but that's just me. But he's still popular among Republican circles out there, and hopefully he will be able to sway some undecideds over to Ted Cruz. On Thursday, Mike Pence, the popular governor of Indiana, endorsed Ted Cruz for president. And there's a reason that that might be important. We're going to talk about that. First of all, before I even go any further, I was reading a poll in the Wall Street Journal in Indiana for the Democrats. Hillary Clinton is leading Bernie Sanders by 4%. The margin of error is 49 So right now they are in a statistical dead heat in Indiana. So, um, and in Guam, on the 7th, uh, the Democrat uh, caucus is going to take place there. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. Either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton will win that. Okay. (laughs) All right. Let's get started on the polls here. All these polls came from uh, thehill.com, and they were all released on April 29th. I don't normally like the polls, but I found these interesting enough that I want to do the the statistics here because, well, you'll see here in a minute. The Mike Down Center for Indiana Politics, an in-state political think tank, did a poll, and their results... Ted Cruz had a significant lead over Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, it was 44.8 to 29%. John Kasich was in third with 13.3%. Okay. The Kasich factor here, and I wish I had patented that, but I didn't. I was a dumbass. I should have. But the Kasich factor comes into play because, see, last week, John Kasich, came in second in four of the five states. Pennsylvania uh, had Ted Cruz in second. The pact was that a lot of the voters for Ted Cruz would vote for John Kasich up there. And that's what happened in four of the five states. John Kasich wanted his people to vote for Ted Cruz in Indiana because they want to stop Donald Trump from getting any more delegates. That's what that pact was over. 
And a lot of Trump people saying, well, that's cheating. No, it's called politics. All's fair in love and politics, folks. And what they're doing is not like it hadn't been done before. It has been done before. Okay, let's talk about this uh, Mike Down, the Center for Indiana uh, Politics poll. Just one more thing. It said that 13% of Hoosier voters surveyed still didn't know who they were going to vote for. And then there's a 4.9% margin of error on that particular poll. So, essentially, it could be 40 to 33% right now for Trump and Cruz, okay? The Kasich factor, that 13.3%, let's say the, the Kasich voters do what John Kasich wanted them to do and vote for Ted Cruz. I don't think all of them will, but let's just assume that, you know, 13% of them will. If that's the case, now all of a sudden you've got a 58.1 to 29 for Ted Cruz over Donald Trump. If you factor in 13% of Hoosier voters who still don't know who they're going to vote for, if you can get Mike Pence to sway them, that suddenly becomes a 26% swing of votes towards Ted Cruz. At that point, you're looking at six, well, 71% essentially, 70 point something is 71% over 29% for Donald Trump. Do I believe this is going to happen? No, but I found this interesting. Now, there was another poll, and I wish I, fa- I could find who actually did the poll, but it had Donald Trump up by nine points over Ted Cruz. It was 41 to 32 with Kasich with 21%. Now, these are Indiana polls, okay? Again, the Kasich factor, 21%. If you can get 21% of Kasich's uh, vote to go over to Cruz, suddenly it is a 53 to 41 Cruz over Trump. Not counting the 13% of uh, people who are undecided. That could make a very big difference at that point because that 20, well, let's see, it's, that would be 34%. That would be 66%, essentially. Let's just say it's 60 to uh, Trump's 41. Okay? With a margin of error 4.9%. There was another poll that, well, actually, Real Clear Politics does their polling. They get all the different polls, and then they average all of them. They found that Trump had a five-point advantage over Cruz in Indiana with a 4.6% margin of error. In other words, the statistical dead heat in Indiana. But there was one more poll that I wanted to talk about. We talked about it with the Democrats. We're going to talk about it with Republicans. The Wall Street Journal poll found Trump leading Cruz 49 to 34 percent with John Kasich at 13. Again, the Kasich factor comes into play. If Kasich's 13 percent is added to Cruz's, it becomes 49-47 with a margin of error of 3.6 percent for the Republican side. Again, a statistical dead heat in Indiana between Trump and Cruz. Now, why am I telling you all this when all the uh, the other pundits and and talking heads out there are saying that Trump is in the lead? What I'm telling you is don't believe the polls. None of them. The polls are not perfect, folks. They can get close sometimes, but they're not perfect. Don't believe the polls. Believe the vote. At the end of Tuesday, when all the votes are counted, that's what you should believe. Whether Cruz or Trump wins all depends on who? The voters in Indiana, not the pollsters, not the talking heads and the pundits. Okay? Now, I've got to talk about something here. And this was a conversation I had with someone. I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, but we've been friends for a long time, and we've talked on the phone on Thursday. And they're pro-Trump. I'm pro-Cruz. We still get along. (laughs) But I posed a question. I said, and and how I put it, I said, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. What if 
Ted Cruz were to pull out the vote at the convention and become the nominee. Well, before I could even get finished, they were saying, well, that's not going to happen. Cruz is going to, you know, lose because Donald Trump's going to get the 1237 and then some well before the convention. I said, well, I'm just posing a what if. What if Ted Cruz were to win the, the, the second or third vote and become the nominee? Would you vote for them? And they could not give me an answer right away. In fact, it took them a couple of minutes of ho-humming. And, well, it's not going to happen and all that. And I said, this is a what if. Would you vote for Ted Cruz if he were the nominee? And finally, they broke down and said no. And I said, okay, so in other words, now you're going to hand Hillary Clinton a victory because you don't like Ted Cruz, even though he is a conservative and he is a Republican. That you kept telling me that's what you wanted in a candidate four years ago. Well, no, I wouldn't vote for him. I don't like him. I said, I would vote for Trump, and I'm going to if he's the nominee. But you can't say that you'll vote for Cruz. I just won't vote. I said, that happened four years ago, and Mitt Romney lost by three or four million votes because three or four million people sat their asses home and didn't vote because they didn't like Mitt Romney because he wasn't conservative enough for them, or he was a Mormon, or God knows what else. And we got a second freaking term of Barack insane Obama. And now we've got something even worse coming down the pike. Hillary Rodham Clinton, who is a fascist, folks. She's beyond socialist. She is a freaking fascist. She wants to take your gun rights away. God only knows what happened after that. And you pro-Trump, Annie Cruz people, if you will not vote for Ted Cruz, if he does become the nominee, all you're doing is ensuring Hillary Clinton is going to win. If that's the case, I'm going to ask you a question right now. If you can't vote for Ted Cruz if he is the nominee, like I can vote for Donald Trump if he is, please take me off your friends list, block me, and I will do the same for you. Here's the thing. Hillary Clinton is a fascist. She's beyond socialist, folks. She is a fascist. She wants to take the gun rights away from American citizens. And if she wins the White House, that's going to be first and foremost on her list of things to do. And you never cruise people on the Trump side. If you do not vote for Trump or for Cruz, if he becomes the nominee, then you are guilty of allowing Hillary Clinton to win the White House. And you deserve everything you get. And if you sit on your asses like four years ago, the people that didn't vote for Mitt Romney because they didn't like him because he was a Mormon or he wasn't conservative enough, he would have been better than another four years of Barack Obama. And yet those three to four million people sat on their ass and did nothing. And we got a second term of Obama. Thank you very much for nothing. So again, if I can vote for Donald Trump, if he is the eventual nominee, can you vote for Ted Cruz if he is? You better think about the consequences of your actions or inactions, folks. The future of the United States of America is on the line, and I'm not being overly dramatic here. I am being God honest. If we do not change course, this country is damned and doomed. All right, my time's up, and thank you for yours. We will talk about the uh, Indiana vote count from Tuesday night on Wednesday. So until then, be good to one another. Say your prayers for America, please, because God knows we need every prayer that we can get for this country. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Until then, later.